Volcanoes are pretty impressive things, naturally occurring events. And most people have seen some big dramatic pictures on the news. About three to four times a year, there's a big eruption somewhere on the planet that can put volcanic ash well above 20,000 feet. And these are the volcanic eruptions that really cause problems for aviation because you're going to cut across cruise uh, pathways. Well, it can cause a multitude of problems, volcanic ash, when it goes into an engine. It can erode uh, and, and wear away components at the front end of the engine which is problematic but when it really gets problematic is when it gets into the very hot sections of the engine where the temperatures are so hot the volcanic ash which is a, a, a silicate particulate starts to melt and it will stick to components and build up a deposit and as that deposit builds up it reduces the flow through the engine. The problems that volcanic ash causes engines led to essentially a total avoiding strategy. There wasn't sufficient information available to define a, a safe uh, allowable limit, so total avoidance was the strategy adopted. This was fine until a, a little known a volcano in Iceland called IFI at Lajokadal erupted in April 2010, sending a, an ash cloud over western, northwestern Europe, one of the, probably the busiest airspace in the world. As a result, people weren't flying. So one of the big inputs we needed for the, for the intelligent engine was engine health monitoring data, which we took from the availability centre. So they're collecting data all the time. And that's a, a great source of data on how engines are faring in the environment they're operating in. And you link that back to the models of what they're operating in. And it, it just keeps educating itself, more and more better data. So the engine health monitoring data becomes more intelligent as well. So we've started to work with the uh, colleagues working on the intelligent engine so that you can, you can calculate uh, through real time almost uh, the damage you're accumulating. You have to collect data from that exposure and feed it back into the model. So the models become self-educating, it's essentially machine learning, but collecting huge amounts of data and building really increasingly sophisticated models that allow us to really uh, deliver the, the concept of the intelligent engine. So by uh, early 2017, May 2017, we were in a position to declare that the Rolls-Royce powered Rolls-Royce engines, the, the Trents and RB211s, could tolerate a up to four milligrams for an hour and concentrations similar to that. Our customers can, can use that information to maximise their use of the airspace rather than having to avoid it completely without any compromise on safety. The next thing that they, we're going to work with with the operators is the impact on economic damage. So they know they're safe, but the next thing they need to know is but how much impact on the engine performance are we going to incur. And this is again where the intelligent engine concept comes back in because you can use that to model and accurately predict what their outcome will be. This is a great example of how we can make big data work. It's a great example of how we can collaborate and, with outside organisations and get that working for us. But it's a great example of how the intelligent engine is going to work too. The Civil Aviation uh, Flight Safety Award is a huge honour for, for me personally, but also the team. And it's nice to get recognition for the, the, the seven years of effort, really, and, and collaborating with people to be able to deliver something that's useful to aviation and that, to be recognised by such an important body as a contribution to flight safety.